All right, guys, October 14th, and I just watched two horror movies with my mother, and we had a good time, so, um, <clears throat> and I was going to do reviews on these. Anyway, the first one that we watched is A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors, and I love, love, love this movie. Um, wow, so I've seen the original Nightmare on Elm Street, and I saw the remake in theater when it was released and I seen Freddy vs. Jason that's basically the three main Nightmare on Elm Street Freddy Krueger movies that I've seen um, <clears throat> I haven't really watched you know rest the rest of the series I maybe seen bits here and there but um, at the pawn shop a while back I came across this four pack DVD with uh, it has one two three and four on it and there are more. I don't know how many there are now, like seven or eight of them or something. There's quite a bit, but the original first four for $2. So I was like, you know, eventually I want the Blu-ray set, but I haven't seen these. And it's like, it's just another two bucks. And I was getting, you know, a handful of movies. So I'm like, yeah, why not? You know, it's a deal. I can check them all out. So now it's the month of October and it's horror movie review time. And well, I want to say that I did love the original, and I even thought the remake was okay. And I love, I like Freddy vs. Jason. I thought that's okay. Um, but the original Freddy Krueger or Nightmare on Elm Street, I do, I do like. I've seen it a few times. But um, <clears throat> so there's a movie reviewer who does a lot of horror movies. His name is Cody Leach, and I'll probably talk about him a lot. But I've watched him a lot not too long ago because he went through all the series of you know, the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, and he rate, he ranked them, like, from the best to the worst, or whatever, the worst to the best. And the same with the uh, Friday the 13th, and the Halloween, and all that. So I haven't seen, you know, a lot of these series all the way through. So it was interesting just to, to hear him talk about them and see, you know, which ones he thought was the best and stuff. And I think that his number one favorite was... Uh, on Nightmare on Elm Street, I think that his number one favorite was Part 3, Dream Warriors. And he was just talking about how cool it was. And he's like, yeah, it was a toss-up between the original and this. Because there's always the love for that original classic. And it's done so well and everything. But I have to agree and join with him in his joy and love for this movie. And he's like, you know, he watched it in his childhood and I didn't. But he said that it's like the movie that shaped him and stuff like that. So... He really, really loves it, but you know what? I really, really love it, too, and I can see myself watching it a lot more times. It's a movie I would definitely suggest to people if you like the Freddy movies and you haven't seen it, or if you, you know, if you're kind of like, eh, on Freddy, like, you don't really hate him, but, you know. <clears throat> um, wow. So, first of all, a cool thing that I learned from Cody Leach talking about it was that it has Doc in for the soundtrack, and Dawkin made a song, like, especially for the movie, and I love how a lot of old movies do it, and it seems like, it seems like we don't have this nowadays, but there's so many movies out there, I couldn't really even say, but it seems like back in the day, when there was, like, these major movies that would come out, like, Ghostbusters and stuff, like, they had their own theme songs and stuff, um, you know, with lyrics and everything that was, like, licensed music or whatever, like, an actual group, and Anyways, I'm a big metal fan, and so, you know, I don't know a lot of Dokken, but, I mean, I like them. They're the classic metal kind of hairband kind of stuff. But he played some of it, I think, in his video. I thought it sounded cool, so I was listening to it, like, on the way to work and stuff for, like, the past week or whatever, because it's just a good song. The, it's Dream Warriors by Dokken. Um, but even the the music that's played in the Nightmare on Elm Street videos, like the creepy music and stuff, is really good. And you would think that I would be a huge fan of Nightmare on Elm Street because of the surreal aspect of it, how it kind of takes place in nightmares, and there was a lot of surrealism in this one, and I do love it. I do love it. I do. I do. But, you know, then there's a part of me that's like, well, you know, I love Dario Argento and, like, Suspiria, and that's you know, to me, that's like higher class, you know, I don't really know anything about movies, but I just know what I've seen and what I love, and, you know, it's like, yeah, this is kind of like lower on the totem pole, 
But Wes Craven is an amazing director. Robert England is great as Freddy. I thought like all the acting in this movie was great for a Freddy Krueger movie. The sets were amazing. The effects and stuff that were in this movie I thought were great, even to this day. You know, maybe a couple that were kind of like, eh. But really, I was pretty blown away by how good this stuff looked by watching some of these other movies um, where the effects look really cheesy. And it's kind of easier... I think, too, because it's kind of like a nightmare world, so the effects, you may, you know, don't have to be so great or whatever, but, you know, I also want to compare this a lot to Child's Play 2, because that's kind of like another slasher, kind of like Freddy Krueger, and I recently watched it, and i never seen Nightmare on Elm Street 2 yet, but I've heard that one's kind of like lower, so it's really good with the first one, and it's kind of like down, and then it goes like way back up with the third one. There's a lot of Freddy Krueger in part three. Um, so there's a lot of the dream world stuff. There's a handful of characters and one of the original survivors, uh, Nancy Thompson comes back in this one. And so there's basically a group of kids that are, you know, being attacked by Freddy. I guess that they're the last kids alive on Elm Street or whatever, you know, as far as that lore goes. And like, there's some good lore, like within the, the franchise. And, you know, I don't want to go over, like, the whole plot. I'm just going to kind of be, like, everywhere with this because I can't, I just can't say how much I love this movie enough. Like, I thought, you know, Cody Leach, like, ranting and raving about how great it was. I was like, yeah, it's probably going to be pretty good. I'm looking forward to checking it out. And it's like, even from the beginning, I was like, wow, this movie is awesome. And it, like, never let up, like, throughout the whole movie. It was just great. Oh. Some of those kids that Freddy's going after, they each have, like, different um, things with them. Um, like, one girl was a drug addict, and, like, one kid can't talk, and one kid can't walk. He's in a wheelchair, and so they each have these issues. But they each have, like, their own special, like, dream power that they discover, like, in the dream world. Nancy Thompson, you know, is basically, like, a main girl. I don't remember her name, but... We start off the movie with her, and, you know, she's attacked by Freddy Krueger, and she's in her bedroom. There's a part, like, where, like, after she thinks that she's out of the dream, you know, even, let's just talk about when she goes into the dream, and there's, like, a girl at the door of this, like, spooky the house, like, Freddy's house or whatever that she was building, and, like, now she's in it in the nightmare, and there's a little girl there, and she goes inside with a little girl, basically, Freddy Krueger starts chasing her, and, like, when he's chasing her, the the floor turns into like goo like tar or whatever and like her feet are stuck and she's like trying to run she's like running in place though like she, she can't get out because she's like stuck and even at that part i'm like wow this is awesome like you know that is just so cool and so after like she escapes out of the dream world or whatever you think that she's out of it she's back in the bedroom and she goes to the bathroom and like she puts her hand on like the the faucet for the sink and the faucet has like these little tongs or however it's designed like her fingers like lock into it but then like the faucet like wraps up like around her fingers and like captures her hand and she like pulls it out and like the faucet's like stuck like gripping her hand and like that's so cool and then like the other faucet like flips up and like Freddy's claws come out of it and it's like man it's so cool that that surrealism and that the horror and I'm thinking Freddy you know he doesn't talk a lot but he does say some funny things here and there and he's just he's cool he's funny but he's also creepy as hell like he really is creepy like Robert England and just the effects that they use on the way he looks the way he moves and acts it's just all perfection, this movie. And look at the trailer. Like, I got the theatrical trailer. I guess there was, like, a fan-made one, and I was like, I want the actual theatrical one. But I can see why, because there's, like, nothing in the theatrical trailer. But it's like, that's kind of cool back in the day when they didn't show the entire movie in the trailer. And I guess, like, everybody knew, you know, Freddy Krueger back then was coming out. And, you know, so they didn't have to do a lot to sell the movie. It's like, oh, Freddy's back. Like, check out the new movie, and that's it. <laughs> you know, uh... But that's cool. Um, you know, it's kind of the same thing with Child's Play, too. When he's like, Chucky's back, Jack. And he, like, 
cuts the jack in the box heads off or head off or whatever. But you know the they talked about how the the Chucky movie was like hollow and it's just kinda like eh. But this Nightmare on Elm Street three was like weighty. It definitely had characters and it had stories. It had different things going on. So Nancy Thompson comes back and she's like, I know about Freddie, like I know what these kids are going through. She wants to help them. She's on some kind of a medication to block her dreaming. And there's like a psychiatrist guy that's watching over the kids and she's talking to him and she's trying to convince him about what's going on. These kids are dying and they're being killed by Freddy. And at first, like the psychiatrist guy, you're like, yeah, he's going to be like the weak link. Like he's not going to believe her or whatever, even if he does, like he's going to get killed off. Like he's, you know, he's pretty much like insignificant or something, but he ends up being a pretty awesome character and he actually lasts throughout the entire movie. It's pretty shocking. Like it's pretty cool to see his uh, growth. He keeps seeing this nun randomly pop up and uh, she tells him kind of, um, about Freddy or, you know, how to get rid of Freddy. Um, it's like she knows a lot about Freddy. And Freddy ends up capturing one of the kids and kind of holds him hostage so that everybody else will come after him, try to save him. And um, so while they're doing that, uh, the nun told like this um, psychiatrist guy that they have to find Freddy's bones and they have to, you know, his remains and they have to bury it in hollowed ground or whatever. Um, because it's like unrest or whatever, I don't know. But anyway, and, and she tells him about Freddy's mother who uh, was like raped by a hundred men or something and that was, Freddy was like the product of that. But that psychiatrist guy I was talking about, eventually he does believe Nancy, and he, he says that he'll agree to giving the kids the medication to block their sleep, and he has like a therapy class with them where they all fall asleep together and they all try to um, figure out like what their dream powers are. One kid has like, he thinks he's like a wizard, and he has like wizard powers, and then another kid like is really strong, and... So it's pretty cool. Um, I just, man, I just don't know what to say. Anyway, so they're gonna they they try to save that kid that Freddy's basically held captive, and but the nun, you know, told him to find Freddy's remains. So there's like two different plots going on where the kids are like in the dream world because um, the psych ward that they're in or whatever decides that, you know, they don't need to be talking to Nancy Thompson and stuff, and, like, they're going to be, the kids are going to be, like, locked down, and they're basically going to be forced to sleep. They're going to take that medication away from them that stops them from dreaming, and so while they're, like, in the dream world fighting Freddy, uh, that, that psychiatrist guy and Nancy's dad, a police officer, which I guess maybe he's in the original, too, I don't remember, but Apparently he, he uh, was the one that killed Freddy or got rid of the body, and they go to a bar and meet him, and they make him uh, show them where Freddy's remains are. So they're, they're off doing that, and then they're all fighting in the dream world. And basically the psychiatrist guy, like, at, at the beginning he says, like, he doesn't believe in religion and stuff to the nun. He says he believes in science. You know, at the beginning, he didn't believe Nancy Thompson with the, the Freddy Krueger story, but he starts, like, believing in everything, and, like, he goes to a church, and he gets holy water, and he gets, you know, it's basically a Catholic uh, church or whatever, but he gets a cross, and um, so it needs to be on hollowed ground. But it's just cool to see his character evolve throughout the movie, and he becomes kind of like a badass, like... Um, Nancy's dad is like an alcoholic, that police officer, and he doesn't really want to do, have anything to do with Freddy anymore. He doesn't want to hear about it. And, and, uh, the psychiatrist kind of like grabs him and he's like, you're going to like find this. You're going to, you're going to help us do this. Like he really like mans up, I guess. 
And some of the effects, some of the sets are just amazing. Like, there's scenes where, like, they're in a, a room and, like, the room will be destroyed. Like, just, like, claws through the wall. Like, paintings being knocked off and just stuff being ripped apart everywhere. Like, oh, it's just awesome. And towards the end, like, when Freddy, like, beckons him to come in deeper into his world or whatever, and there's just, like, a door that appears in front of him and opens up. And there is a little bit of nudity, because there's one of the aides at the psych ward, and the kid that can't talk, like, has the hots for her or something. So when Freddy, like, gets in his nightmare and messes with his head, he, like, he becomes that female aide, and, like, he lures the kid in with her. And it's just... Freddy's so awesome in this movie, and there's just this, these little marionettes, and we see them, like, hanging on the wall or something, and then it, like, zooms in, and it's, like, the nightmare world, and, like, the face is, like, blank, like, clay or whatever, and then it, like, morphs into Freddy's face, and, like, he has his, like, claws come out in his hand, and and then he, like, drops down, and he's walking, like, this tiny marionette, it's like, man, that is awesome, and it's creepy. And then he just, like, grows, like, in front of the bed, like, like the regular Freddy, like, oh, here I am. There's a part where there's a girl that's watching the TV, and, like, on the TV there's, like, a talk show, and there's a guy and a woman talking, like, sitting in chairs next to each other, and, and the woman's like, well, this is what I think, or whatever, and it's like the dream world, because the girl fell asleep, she's watching the TV. But the woman on the talk show is like, this is what I think. And then, like, Freddy stands up and he's like, I don't give a crap what you think. And he just, like, slashes her face. I'm like, whoa, that's awesome. And then, like, the TV, like, the TV is like an old little TV, like, hanging on the wall. It's, like, mounted on the wall. And then, like, arms come out of it, like, robotic arms. And then, like, Freddy's head, like, pops out of it, like, morphs out of it. Like... I can't even sit here and talk about all the awesome moments and all the awesome effects because it would just it would just take forever. It's like endless with this movie. It just brings so much at you. And just all the colors and just the sets and the scenery and like the final kind of world where Freddy is like it's like there's like bones and flesh and fire like hell but there's like plumbing and stuff like pipes and it's like metal and like mechanical stuff and it's like ugh. Man. And there's a part where there's like a hallway of all mirrors. These mirrors just placed differently, like crooked and stuff, all the way down this hallway. And like Freddy's like, I can't be everywhere at once. Because when the police officer and the psychiatrist finally find his bones, they're like in a uh, the back of a car in a junkyard, like deep in a junkyard. And so they got his bones and they're going to bury him, but then his bones like come alive. And, like, his bones, like, fight him. And the effects in that's kind of like, eh, but it's really still not bad. You know, I'd say, like, the bones walking and whenever it shows, like, a pit, like, beneath them, those are effects are kind of like, eh, but they're still good. Like, I just, I don't know. And then a lot of the other effects, like the TV and stuff, like, blew my mind, really. Like, it looks, like, pretty flawless, really. For what it is, it's just amazing. But with all the mirrors, you know, Freddy's fighting them, like, with the bones. He ends up killing the girl's father, the police officer. And then he almost kills and buries the psychiatrist guy, but he doesn't. But then he goes back into the dream world, and these kids are in this hallway, and he's like, I wish I could be everywhere at once. And then, like, he pops up, like, in all the mirrors, and he's like, oh, there are, like, tons of them. And then he starts taking them all through the mirror, but there's one kid that can't talk. He's standing there, and he's kind of frightened, like everybody's being taken away. And um, he finally screams, no! Like, finally he can talk, and, like, it, like, rattles all the mirrors, like, shatters all of them in the hallway. And just that set is so cool. Just, like, that hallway with all those mirrors, and they're all shattered like that, and just... And there's tons of scenes like that where there's, like, rooms that, you know, just a lot of work had to be put into this movie, really, and it paid off. Like, Wes Craven had a vision, and I would say, you know, I don't really have a lot of lists and stuff. I have, like, some of my top favorite directors and stuff, and I know Wes Craven's great. He's done a lot of good stuff, even besides Nightmare on Elm Street. He's a fantastic director, but... 
I would probably maybe put this in like my top ten horror films of all time. I don't know. I mean, it's definitely, it's not my number one, but it really deserves to be on the list, like, really, really high. And I do feel like, I feel like it might be better than the original, because the original is always going to have its place, and it's a classic, but the original did kind of have the slow build and stuff, which was good for it, because it's the first introduction to Freddy. But this movie is just totally awesome. <laughs> It's just totally awesome. It really took me by surprise that it was so good. But I don't want to keep you guys going on forever. We're on 20 minutes, but yeah, I got this pack. I need to see the other ones. I've heard, I don't know if the second one and the fourth one are really that great, but the first one and the third one. That's the third one, the Dream Warriors. See a few of the kids there. I mean, and the, the effects with like his burned body... Like, towards the end of the film, he does something, and they're like, you're getting stronger, and he's like, yeah, the strength of children's souls make me stronger, and he, like, rips his shirt up, and there's, like, all these faces, like, in his body, like, his whole body is, like, burnt like his face is, but there's, like, other little faces, like, popping out of his chest and stuff, it's like, man, that's, and it looks pretty cool, it's not like, well, that's horrible, like, that's totally dated, it's like, no, that's, that's good, I mean, I love it, love it, love it. Love it. Love it. Great movie. Really fun. And totally worth watching again and again. So, I guess I'll end it here. But I could always have more to say about it. But if you guys haven't seen it, you better check it out. The Dream Warriors. Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Great movie. Alright guys. Until next time, see you later.